Hey y'all, happy Friday! Thanks so much for joining me tonight for another craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so tonight I am working again on my mom's sweater here. I uh, Last night we finished the cuff on one side. We're adding these red cuffs just to lengthen it. And I got the other one to do tonight. So the, the last one took us two nights to finish. But man, I'd really like to wear this uh, over the next week and this weekend. So I'd love to be able to finish the cuff tonight. I don't know if we'll get there. We got to pick up stitches, do a whole pile of rows and everything. Uh, but I am going to try and be speedy just in case we can get this second cuff done. I wore it all day today. And man, was it annoying <laughs> to have one cuff perfect, perfect, perfect length. And then the other one just like me keep on pulling it down because I was chilly. So I want to get this this guy uh, a little further along here tonight. So all right, let's get going. All right, I hope everyone had a fabulous Friday. Okay, zooming you guys in here. Okay, so I tested out the first cuff today. Wore this uh, wore this sweater all day today. Ugh, and it worked out perfect. I love it. Uh, the the um, tubular bind off that we used worked fabulously. This felt like really great on my, and it went to like about here, which is just perfect. So I'm really, really happy with this. Um, so I did count <laughs> uh, to make sure that these, uh, this, this width was the same as this. And I think we're fine there. And then it's also like between like 18 or 20 stitches. I'm going to have to count it again. And I always have a hard time knowing what stitches to count. Like, I think this first one is actually our, our, um, where we picked up our stitches, but like way back down here, I, I'm having a hard time counting which one was our bind off and not. So, I mean, I'd like to make these the same length. So once we get further on here, we'll have to do some, some counting. So, all right. Uh, here we go. So here's the, the seam. So I'm going to just start picking up stitches. So just like the last one, I'm going, I'm not, I'm not picking up the like top little area, but I'm going like the first row underneath. So let's see, I need my yarn. Get you all set up. And I, I don't think I'm going to use a marker this time, like a, a row marker, because I can tell just because of the fatness of these seams sewn together. I'm This, this is like two knits but i'm going to actually just count it as a single knit so we'll go knit pearl knit pearl um and then we'll end with the knit so i am going to be cinching that up a little bit there and i think last time we we started um a little over as well or did we i think for the um bind off make sure the knit is first so for the bind off we want the knit first so i'm, I'm gonna start right here i think we'll just go or should I? Yeah, we're gonna start right here. So I gotta start like a hair lower on, on this area because it's just like so thick and chunky. All right, so I'm just trying to grab this. I do think this would kind of be a little bit easier with a crochet hook, but we're gonna try and do it without. So there should be 34 stitches. Um, we'll do like 16 on one side and 18 on the other like we did last time. That that worked pretty well. Okay, so now we got to go into the V. Oh wait, theoretically we're going to go into the V of the uh, um, the knit stitch, but remember this is where, where it was joined. I'm treating this all as one, so I'm going to actually skip that and go to the pearls, first pearl stitch. All right, good. We got it. Man, I feel like I, <laughs> I feel like doing this is, I, I all of a sudden forgot how to like knit is what this feels like. But I think, I think we're doing this all right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty
five, six, seven. So I'm just making sure I'm going knit pearl, knit pearl, seven, eight, as far as um, where I'm picking up the stitches. Oh, Sage says, I love your knitting. Oh, thanks so much. I, I've, I'm excited to be doing this again. Uh, knitting, uh, again, I, it's been ages, I feel like, since I've, oops, I missed that one. It's been ages since I've, I've knit. So this is just feeling so calming and, and nice to do uh, for me, just like doing this little knit. And I got to learn something along, I got to learn a whole pile of things. Uh, along the way and I oh I, like I love that more than anything like just learning a new crafting um, anything like it's it's another little superpower you can put into your pocket sort of thing <laughs> uh, is how I feel about like learning new stuff so I didn't know how to join onto uh, a cuff like this and that bind off was was new to me all right four eight twelve fourteen fifteen okay one more over here I think I'll do 15 16 yeah 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 someone taught me um oh Jenna who who I work with taught me that I should like count in in fives because five is like an easy group to just visually see without uh, paying too close attention so instead of the twos i'm so used to going like two four six eight and then i lose count so i can just go five you know ten uh, fifteen sixteen like fives are a really easy group to just like you don't even have to count the little bits you can just see that this is five you got the two on the sides and the one in the middle you know that at least you know visually you can see that's five without having to really think so i'm going to try counting in fives from now on so anyway so this is this is the first uh 16 so i'm gonna just pull my i'm, I'm using that magic loop method again with knitting um versus the the uh double pointed needle so okay so that's 16 on that side so i should be left with 18 to pick up on this side and then we can start so i left off with this pearl okay I think I got that in quite the right place. Eh, maybe I did. All right. Oh, can't get the guy. Come on. You can get there. There we go. One. Now into the pearl. Two. I shouldn't really have to count, actually. Um, like I said, I'll just count as I go, and it should just end up in the right spot, so. Um, I'll chit-chat instead. That's more fun. Ooh, not gonna get that one. So I am trying to, uh, ah, this one's tight. Uh, I am trying to go a bit faster than I've gone the, ca the past couple nights. Last night, I feel like I went pretty quick, but, um, I don't know. We'll just see. I'm going to try and go a bit faster because I would love to finish this whole cuff tonight uh, instead of it taking two nights because it is Friday and I will be um, doing it tomorrow. And I want to wear this. I've been, I wore it today with just the one cuff done. And I was saying it's kind of annoying with just, uh, just the one cuff. Um, I'd like to wear this over the weekend and just, you know, it's going to be my house coat, basically. So uh, when it's chilly in the house, which is all the time this time of year, I'd like to... Oops, shoot, lost one. That's like my nightmare, <laughs> losing stitches and knitting. Uh, but I'd like to wear this around the house. So it'd be nice to not have knitting needles hanging from it at the end of the night here. All right, we're getting there, but it's getting tough, all twisty. Oh, Stitch Pretty says lovely colors. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, so it um, so this is my mom's sweater from high school that I'm updating. I'm just giving it some 
length in the sleeves right now. And uh, all I had for wool yarn, because um, I wanted to match the, the fiber content, I, I guess, uh, is was this red or I had some black and I saw the red first and I thought it was pretty so and, and white and red always look nice and it's you know my old school colors and it's you know if I wear it you know by my parents in Wisconsin it's like badger colors so that's that's all the colors make sense all right so uh five ten 15, 16, okay, I got two more. 16. I knew I wasn't quite done yet, but I just wanted to see how close I was. 16, uh, 17. So that's a knit, and then we end with a purl, which makes sense, uh, which is right there. So these first, these first guys are going to be kind of a big leap because... Uh, where this is joined, it's like two big knit rows. Uh, in the other other half, they were kind of squished together a little bit more, the other cuff. Um, but this one is a little bit bigger, so we're going to just squish them together. But all right, we got all our stitches here, which is fabulous. I'm going to just kind of tuck in this and just in the sleeve for now, so it's out of our, out of our way. So I think this kind of counts as our first row. There's about... I don't know, I counted, one time I counted 20 rows, like I, I, I took the other, I was just curious, so I counted the rows here, one time I, cut, I counted 20, the other time I cut ni counted 19, and I have counted 18 once, so ugh, once we get closer, I'll have to like, really do a, a decent count. Alright, so we can just start knitting now, oh, so knit pearl, we're doing a knit pearl ribbing. And I'm going to get just go right to continental style knitting right away just because I think it's a little bit faster. Let's get some, some thread prepared. Oh, you like learning but live? It's, it's, it's a scary situation. Uh, Sylvia says, um, yeah, so... If I'm doing something completely, completely new before coming on live, I will definitely um, watch myself some YouTube videos quick just to be like, I have no idea how to do this and I can't look up a YouTube video while I'm live. I suppose I could if it, if it came to that, but I try to be a little bit prepared for you guys. So <laughs> beforehand, I'll, I'll do some studying and write myself notes and trying to figure it out. But when I do the actual task, um, it's usually for the first time, but I've done enough prior research, like the hour or two before to feel confident enough of like, oh yeah, I, I get the concept. I understand it. I think I can do that. But I don't, sometimes it is the most of the times it is the actual first time. I don't like practice beforehand. It's I just try and if I can get the the why of everything, like if I can get the concept, then then I get it. So if I can I, I do it till I get to that point and I'm not really comfortable doing it until I get that. Oh, Lacey uh, uh, in the sky with Lennon. <laughs> I've never seen anyone knit before. I'm fascinated. I crochet anything like crocheting. So I think. Okay, mechanically, I feel like it's a different, different thing. Um, but like the feeling I get, it's still that like just counting each stitch and uh, um, just you know that repetitive counting, that repetitive pattern that you gotta say in your head or whatever. That feels very much the same. Uh, in the sense of just, like, how relaxing that can be. So in that sense, I feel it's the same. I think knitting is... Like, if I were to introduce a needle craft between yarn and knitting to a complete beginner, um, I think they'd probably have quicker success with crochet. But I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, maybe that's just me putting my own fears, <laughs> fears on that. I'm still like afraid, like what if things fall off the needle? And I think it's just mostly still like I still, every time with knitting, you know, like I, like how to put this cuff on and like, I, I feel like I have to 
Google specific things every single time I I knit. Uh, so I don't know. Sometimes I feel a little less comfortable with with knitting compared to crochet. Um, and I think just having the one loop with, with crochet is really, really nice. And with crochet, if you pull out a few stitches, usually it's no biggie. You just stick your hook back in that loop and, you know, do that pattern that you accidentally pulled out a little bit. And with knitting, I just feel like the whole thing can go awry. I just, I just don't know. I'm just not very confident at like what direction I put the stitches back on the needle and all that. <laughs> so, but I think, like I said, I think that's a lot of my own fears there. Um, I don't know which I learned first. I think I kind of learned, man, I don't know. I don't know which I learned first. I want to say knitting, but I have no like clear memory of learning crochet. I have a, a sort of clear memory of learning knitting. Um, I don't know. It has the, but it does have the same feel. Different, different techniques. I mean, you're still putting loops inside of other loops, <laughs> I suppose. Uh, but, but uh, different, different look and feel. Oh, but I love the way the knitting looks just more professional. I do, I do feel fancy when I'm doing knitting, because I, I do feel like all the all the stitches just laying out all perfectly next to each other. I do really love love that, that professional, like nice look of, of knitting. Crochet can get like, it, it, just like you're not making perfectly in line little Vs, it's like swirly little stitches, right? So it can look a little less uniform, but it's just it's just a different look. But I find it like the same level of relaxing, just like each, especially, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm visiting and yammering, but just when you're alone and you have some music on and you're just, or a movie and you're just doing that same pattern over and over again, uh, just that the relaxation just like wipes over you. And that's, I get that with knitting and crochet. Those are like my go-tos if I need that, that feeling. Oh, interesting. Not Katie says, I tried knitting first and failed, then did crochet. It was so easy. Then went back to knitting and it was so easy. <laughs> interesting. Okay. Oh, my mother-in-law knits and made me a scarf. I crocheted a scarf for myself and I think it looks more pro. Yeah, it's just, it's just a totally different look. I don't, I, I'm, wouldn't call like one more professional looking than the other. I think people are maybe a little more used to the knit look because that's what most clothing, stretchy clothing looks like, like sweaters and that sort of thing. So I think it's a, a look people are used to in their, you know, just daily things that they wear. Oh, Edgy says, I, I like knitting garments, but nothing beats out crochet when you're trying to bang out an afghan. That's the truth. That's true. So with, um, with crochet, I feel like there's a lot more opportunity for, like, variations and stitches. And, and it's more sculptural, I guess I would say. Knitting, you're, you're kind of in, I mean, sure, you, you could be sculptural with, with knitting, but you're, you're basically making a fabric, uh, like a, a organized fabric, I guess. Whereas crochet, you can really get crazy real quick <laughs> and you can adapt. So like, uh, you could, based on the pattern and not the yarn alone, bang out an afghan. You're absolutely right. You could do like a big, you know, where you have lots of chains and then the next row you're just like adding, you're just grabbing one of those chains. Like there's, there's a huge, there's ways to make that go super dang fast or like huge double crochets. Uh, whereas with knitting, I mean, if you want to bang out a quick afghan little blanket, I mean... 
it's basically an idea of just making using a bigger bigger needle and bigger yarn which you can also do with with crochet and you'd still be faster <laughs> so yeah i think uh crochet does that have that and it's just i think it's just easier to like change direction and uh, make different looks and uh fun little decorative things i think it uh, there's more flexibility in in that i think in crochet Oh, interesting. Not Katie says, oh yeah, I love knitting for clothing, but will always grab my hook for Amigurumi and, and baby blankets. Totally. Exactly. I think, uh, um, crochet is very, very, very versatile. And I mean, like, you know, we, we've been having this discussion about crochet versus tatting, uh, Crochet is infinitely, as far as what I can tell, more um, malleable and uh, has more flex flexibility in the sense of that you can just make anything uh, with crochet versus tatting. Tatting is like for lacy, just very lacy, but like um, you can get that effect in crochet very easily, like that making doilies and that sort of thing. And, but it could also be like knitting, you know, you can make scarves and sweaters and all that with crochet, which you, you can't do in the same way with, with tatting. Uh, and you can even make crochet, there's stitches to make it even look like knit to some extent. Uh, but yeah, I mean, but ultimately knit is, uh, it's just gonna stretch differently, it's gonna feel differently, it's gonna, uh, be just, um, a bit more, uh, I don't know, kind of clean and organized compared to crochet. Oh, uh, nursery says, oh my God, you got me hooked on tatting though. I know I, I got to do more tatting. That's been so fun. I've, I've, that's been a new like learning thing for me and I am loving it, especially though I have like I have like something in my soul of like loving learning like these things that I think are like these deep mysteries <laughs> as far as crafting. So like tatting, it's like, how does that shuttle work? I just don't understand. It looks like magic. So I have to figure it out. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, and then knowing it, it feels like, oh my God, I got this super secret superpower uh so i do i do love learning all those little special secrets of crafting tammy says i i always find crochet looks like groovy <laughs> as in like the 60s yeah it definitely there's there's an era of that look being super duper popular for sure So we'll see how we do on this tonight. Like I said, I would love to finish this cuff, but you know, this is going to take the time it takes for me to, to knit like the 20 rows or whatever. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see. Oh, I only have one voice today. That's nice. <laughs> I'm not double uh, echoing in your phone or in your whatever. Oh, tatting is next on your list, but it looks hard. Uh, it's so... That's what I thought too when I started, but there's really just a couple, like one real basic, the main like concept that, that you need to get and then it all kind of falls in place. So there's only one stitch. So like in crochet, there's a zillion stitches and, and knitting there's, you know, knits and pearls and knit two together and blah, blah, blah. Um, with tatting, there's the double stitch, the end. <laughs> uh, so it's... It's just like one stitch. Sometimes you do um, only the first half of that stitch and sometimes only the last half, but that's like definitely a more advanced land. You're not going to get that in most patterns. Um, so it's just like literally the one stitch that you need to learn. And within that one stitch, at least if you're shuttle tatting, and that's the only tatting I know how to do so far, if you're shuttle tatting, that's that cute little... Um, little like kind of V contraption. Um, 
But anyway, uh, with the shuttle... If you can learn how to do the flipping of the loop, so you do the, first of all, the mechanics of how to actually use the shuttle, and I, and I have some videos on that in my TikTok and, and stuff, and on YouTube, uh, just for my lives, just how the, how the shuttle actually functions, like the, the idea of um, going over and under and under and over, uh, so that concept. So once you understand how the shuttle actually physically works, um, that's one kind of, at least for me, was an aha moment. And then uh, after you get that, uh, the, the big thing to learn is how to do the flipping of the loop when you're, when you're doing a double stitch. And I have a video on that as well. So if you can learn just like the idea of how the shuttle actually works and then that flipping of the loop when you do a double stitch, I mean, you're done. You got everything. <laughs> everything else is, is easy peasy um, if you can get those two concepts. At least that's what I've, I've found so far. And yes, obviously you can get way advanced. You can add beads. You can do all sorts of things. But... It really is only that one stitch, and, you know, that's, that's it. So, those are the things I would focus on if you're wanting to learn. Oh, you find nur nurse, uh, Nursery <laughs> says, I, I find I pull too tight with the shuttle and my stitches aren't as uniform. Oh, as with needle tatting. Oh, interesting. So, after... Uh, after I did a few snowflakes with tatting, I found that I, my stitches kind of, like, I got more gentle. Um, and then that was something I actively tried to do. Like, oh, maybe I don't have to pull so tight and whatever. And I, I feel like I try and do that with knitting and stuff, too. I, I'm just like, oh, man, I'm really tense. I probably don't need to be like that. And then I just try and lessen that. It's just kind of like noticing while you're working on it. Um, but, yeah, with... Uh, so after, after the first few, I got a little bit better um, with that as far as tatting goes, but I definitely need a, a lot more practice. I noticed when I was doing like just a, that TikTok the other day where I was doing like a long, just like real time, I've never just like filmed myself real time and, and watched it back. And I'm like, man, I'm, I'm doing a lot of extra stuff, a lot of extra movement with that hand and you know, and this and that, and, uh, like, I could see areas of excess movement where I probably didn't need to do that, so those are little things I might work on, and theoretically that will get my speed up uh, without having all those extra movements, because, I mean, you could, you go to YouTube and you type in, like, tatting, and people are just going shoo, 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 with their hands, like, super duper duper fast, and it's crazy town how fast they can just tat. And it's, it's, it looks like magic. And it's like, oh my god, okay, yeah. Clearly I'm never going to learn this. Because this is confusing. I've, I have no idea mechanically what they're doing at all. Um, so, but it's fascinating to watch. So yeah, someday it'd, it'd be cool to get that fast. I'm thinking this going around and around with this magic loop... It'd probably be faster to just do double pointed needles because I'd get to skip this step of where I have to pull it back through the stitches and all that, which is kind of annoying. But I have the comfort of not <laughs> using double pointed needles here. I those I, I'm a little scared of. I'm I'm fine with using them. I actually don't even know if I have size eight. That's the other problem. Like you have to have the exact size needle all the time and. So these interchangeable needles have been great for that. Ooh, you're a spinner. Uh, not kidding, does anyone know how to spin? Honestly, my favorite of the fiber arts. I would freaking love to do that. That's That's been on my radar for a while as like something I'd love to love to do. Even just mixing the colors of the bats would be like just so fun, I think. But man, that requires a bunch of equipment I don't have. Although I've done drop a drop spindle before. Ugh, and that's fun. Um, I've actually drop spindled. Um, I have like sometimes in our old, in our old embroidery kits, we, they were in these plastic bags 
and it had like a little plastic seal that you had to tear off before. So I had all these little pieces of plastic. I actually drop spindled a whole pile of that plastic and made like this plastic yarn with the drop spindle. And I, I wove it together for a placemat later. Uh, but that was super fun. I'd love to do more drop spindle stuff. If you like, like spinning and uh, um, spindles and all that, I and and this is just to anybody, any crafter. I got my mom this book for for Christmas. It I hate the title, but it's so fascinating. It's called Women's Work, and it's um, the cover is like this tan cover that I don't know looks historical like with hieroglyphics and stuff i forget what the the subtitle is but it has it's like the history of fiber arts like through like way 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 back history like ancient egypt and before uh and it's just like how the history of fabrics and fiber basically form civil civilizations it is absolutely fascinating i freaking love that book so much um I'll have to borrow it from my mom and read it again. But if anyone's interested in, in like getting a good history that you never hear about of fiber arts and how it formed, yeah, it's just civilizations. I, I recommend that book. I love it. But a lot of, they talk about drop spindles a lot and, and just like archaeologists finding different spindles and they knew that, you know, based on the spindle, they probably uh, did stuff with, with um you know linen fibers versus versus wool fibers based on the spindles they were finding and uh just how different hieroglyphics you know like women were drawn white and men were drawn red but the women were inside all day long like at the factory uh doing the spindle stuff where the men were in the river with the finished garments like doing the final i don't know like softening of it or something i don't remember but anyway so they're like sunburn <laughs> outside all the time so just like you learn these things that are just taking it for granted and when you look at just like hieroglyphics or something like that and you realize oh it all has to do with the textile industry it's just fascinating and how some cultures it was an industry and other cultures it was just more of the woman's thing to do uh, to provide for like the family because you can keep the kids nearby and you know how it's more of a community thing but then yeah then there's the other side where it's just an industry like in like in Egypt it's just fascinating so anyway I recommend that book Oh, Anne says, I love the drop spindle too. Ooh, you dye your fiber in your crock pot. LOL. That's, oh man, that just sounds fun. So there's, um, at my parents' house, they have a, a ton of um, black walnut trees in the area. And I always thought that'd be fun to use those to dye. Because dang, I, I opened one of those up once with my bare hands. And that was a dumb mistake. I had like dyed hands for, you know, a week. Humble Albie says you can use a pencil, CD, or a hook to make a, a spindle. That's how, <laughs> that's how the the spindle was that I did all that um that that putting all that plastic <laughs> together, uh, spinning all that plastic together. It was just a stick that had a hook on already, and I tied to the bottom. I had a bunch of extra fabric, like jean fabric that was kind of heavy, and I just tied that to the bottom, and that was the weight. And so that was all, all it was that I, I used for that too. It's just fascinating. Making something out of nothing. I feel like I'm knitting kind of tightly. I should maybe pay attention to that because I don't want this to be like a totally different cuff than the other one. 
Not that the other one was loose, but I don't know. I probably am knitting the same. I just feel like I'm... Maybe I'm just, like, talking and paying less attention today, so I'm... I don't know. This looks the same. I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to worry about it. What do we got going on here? One, two, three, four, five, I don't know, six-ish. We got a long way to go. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure we'll be finishing, finishing this tonight. Ugh, I'd like to though. some comments on YouTube there quick. Are you working on your yarn right now? Oh, you want to switch what is what it's so hard. You're working on I'm working on my working yarn in my right. And I want to switch. Oh, I don't I don't quite get what you mean, Katie. How do I keep myself from dropping stitches when I knit? I always end up with a lot of space in between. A lot of space in between the stitches or a lot of space space like when you switch needles here uh, I just try and st I mean like I don't I'm definitely don't have a great answer because I just I feel like I'm always learning that stuff too when I but when I, I do go from like one area to the other here uh, I, I do on purpose like try and make it extra tight because I know it's gonna want to be loose um, switching from one side to the other so I on purpose try and stitch that one tight I think um, I don't know consist consistent stitch um, gauge and length and, and all that just consistency in general I think just comes from doing it a little a little bit like working on it for a while and then just um noticing yourself a little bit like just being aware of like oh am I pulling really tight or am I out of yarn here and is that making things more tight do I need to loosen up in general and just like asking yourself those questions I think a little bit as you stitch and then just getting like practicing those little minutiae's um, until it can get a little bit more consistent. Oh, when you switch needles. Yeah, when I switch needles, I just, I mean, like, I don't know. Maybe someone else here has a tip for that. Um, but I just try and, like, when I'm switching needles here, I just try and make that stitch a little tighter than the other ones. Uh, just, or, like, get it right up against it just so it can um, hopefully look like the other ones. The other, the other way to do it is to switch it up so like maybe maybe it seems only loose like for this little bit and maybe I should actually switch it up um switch it up here so maybe I'll what did I do last time I, I managed to get like these two over here somehow I don't know um but yeah if you keep switching like the point where it where the join is like if I move two stitches over then the join will be over here um, then it like tricks the eye a little bit like that little gap won't be all in the same spot each time ooh piggy me says I'm trying to learn how to knit blankets I'm a crocheter yeah I still we talked about this a little bit earlier but I think crochet is probably still the a speedier way for little baby blankets. I had a baby blanket. My blankie. That I don't know where it is anymore. I'm so sad. But that was crocheted by my ma my grandma. And I I love 
that it, it was um I've I've done this pattern since it's that like a chevron pattern uh, of crochet where you do like you know I don't know ten single crochets and then in the next chain or whatever you do three three single chain or th single crochets in the in the same chain so you got you got like 10 stitches and then you got three in the same stitch and then you got 10 more and then you skip two so you're always adding a stitch and then getting rid of you're always adding two and getting rid of two basically and it's making it makes like this little chevron and you can switch colors along i just love it but that's always a relaxing pattern, I think, to, to do and looks cute for those are the those are the um, little baby blankets that we always got were uh, from from grandma was those chevron ones. Oh, Piggy Maze says, I think knit knit is pretty. I just struggle so badly. Yeah, it, it, it definitely takes takes a lot of practice and especially if you've crocheted like or just like like anything it's like going through all to all these stitches on a needle and I like I've been knitting forever <laughs> I mean not consistently and not with a plan to improve really um but I am freaked out that I'm gonna lose like, that all these stitches are gonna come off of the needle and how am I gonna get them back on like that is a huge fear <laughs> of mine <laughs> Uh, or like if you get a if you skip a stitch and then you get like a huge run I know theoretically like I know in my head the process to get it back but still like I'm worried like what if I don't know the right angle for it and all that so I don't know I have a lot a lot more phobias as far as knitting goes compared to crochet did I start continental or English style I started English I think right hand yep uh, and you want to switch. I started um, English. Uh, that's also called throwing. That's where you have it. Like I'll just do it. So this is this is the English style where you actually have it in your right hand. And let's see, I'm on a purl, so I'm gonna bring my my um, thread forward, and then the, this is like that throwing motion where you move your hand over, throwing. <laughs> so it's like you're throwing, you're tossing that that um, yarn and then so same thing so here's the knit I'm going around with my right hand um, so that's that's the English or throwing way and then the continental you have in your other hand and you're kind of using your um, your finger your third finger as like a pad um, so I'm almost like oh, this is a pearl so I'm almost like stretching the the loop so it, it's easy to see on the on a knit so on a knit so I, I learned how to continental knit my mom continental knit but I kind of learned on YouTube and uh, um, it really helped by seeing it from like this angle that we're at now like as if you're actually knitting because usually you know in old school um, YouTube videos you're just seeing it from the front and you're like well that's not helpful but here so I'm holding it with my my left hand now and uh, my third finger here has like the the thread is right on there so i'm kind of that's like a pad almost that my that my yarn's going to be on so what you do is for a knit i'm almost like pulling open the stitch so i'm i'm going knit wise so from left to right into the stitch and i'm almost pulling it open and then putting the needle this um this needle here on the pad of my my finger and then like scooping out the yarn that's there so it's almost opening up revealing that yarn behind and scooping it out so that's that's kind of how continental and then then like pulling it off the needle right and then for the pearl which is not what's nice for the pearl is I don't have to like bring the yarn forward like really awkwardly with my right hand I can just go I can just put the the yarn in front so now I'm ready for the pearl because the yarn is in front of my left needle instead of um, behind and then I just go in pearl wise, which is right to left. 
and I just go right down the middle, and it, this is the this is the key that I learned from that original video with a pearl. Now you just flip your finger down, and that's doing that wrap around. Flip that finger down, and then you can scoop that out and bring your needle, bring the loop off of the needle, and then flip your finger back up. So that flip motion is great for the pearl. And then I just put it behind again because I'm going to do a knit, knit, scooping. So stretching that, scooping it out on the pad. And then pearl, just get it in the front, really easy. Pearl wise, go down the middle and flip down. And there we go. Oh, you, th you think your problem might be just the tensioning with the working yarn continental. Oh, but the pearl tip will help loads. Oh, good. Yeah, give it a try. Yeah, that tension, that, man, ever, like all needle crafts, I feel like <laughs> you got to deal with some sort of tension uh that's that's tough to learn yeah i let's see how do i do it i wrap around no i don't i just wrap around once no i don't i do i wrap around twice so i i wrap around my pinky twice and then i come up in front of all my fingers and then grab this i, I think other people go this way i don't know everyone holds it differently so i i, I i'm sure i'm not doing it in the classically correct way uh, <laughs> I feel like there's always, like, the way you're supposed to do it, and and I'm I'm sure I'm not doing that that correctly. I never I never do that right. Like I know with crochet, I hold hold my needle like this instead of like 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 this, which I think is like the classically <laughs> correct way. Yeah, what really helped me learn in Continental was the idea of, of the finger pad as what you're working on. So, like, again, I'm putting my yarn on the, the finger pad here and kind of holding it right against the needle. And then that stretching across and scooping up on the pad, that was really helpful. And then just, yeah, that pearl where it's so easy to just put in front and then that flip down to, to wrap around the yarn around the needle and then you can come back up when you're done and then get it behind again for the knit it's so much faster and you'll you'll find with continental uh when you are like stitching back and forth i mean we're we're in the round we're knitting in the round so you don't get that same effect but like when you're knitting back and forth you don't have to ever like like I can leave my hand all set up right here and I can just turn and then get going right away. I don't have to like drop it and then like move everything around and whatever like you, you do with um, the English or throwing style. Marianne is saying, I find English style is a bit easier to adjust to. So so I learned English style and I'm, I still feel like I'm learning, getting like comfortable with continental. So whenever I'm using doing a pattern where I got to do something like fancy, like a like a bobble or, you know, you know, slip, slip, knit and, you know, yarn overs, all that fancy stuff or cable, um, all of that, I feel like I'm trying to I'm trying to not do this, but I, I feel like to really understand it, I have to switch back to to English or throwing style. So I'm not, I'm comfortable with, with, um, continental when I'm just doing like this sort of stuff, but like, yeah, when I got to get into it, like cables and, and all that and follow a pattern really strictly, um, all that fancy stuff, I feel like a yarn over right now would be uncomfortable for me, um, with continental. So <laughs> though that's like a, a thing I want to practice is doing something fancy and making myself stick to continental, uh, cause because that's just another continental. It's just another thing I didn't learn right away. So it seemed like magic. And then now learning it, it feels like I'm doing a magic trick. So, <laughs> which is, makes me feel good. So that's why I like using continental. But really it is, it is so much faster, I think. And uh, less, less hand movement, less everything. So it is, there is value in it for sure. But yeah, all the fancy stuff, I still have to switch back to, um, throwing or the um english english way of doing it oh sylvia says i i uh this is how i taught 
my son who learned this in school. Oh, cool. So you, the, um, the English way, I think that makes a lot of sense. Like, I think maybe you get like the structure of a stitch. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. But like the idea of just wrapping around. I mean, I like that. That makes sense. And I, you get that with the English. I wonder if that's the common way of teaching people. I don't know. My mom learned, my mom learned continental and I learned English. So I don't know. Yep, not case if it, if it works, it's correct. That how, That's how to do it, exactly. Yeah, whatever you learn, the way, the way you learn, that's fabulous. I decided to, to like just, I wanted to learn continental too, just to like, basically because it looked like magic and I wanted to know how to do it <laughs> uh but uh yeah just to kind of be curious I guess and, and learn another way to do it but now now I'm really happy that I've learned because it is I, I do find it quicker especially when you're doing a rib like this uh it's just so much easier to go back and forth between knits and pearls. And just if someone doesn't know and are and are here a knit, you get this this kind of like look of the like pretty little V and a pearl um it has more of like this sort of look where you get that little bump in the front. So like here is you you get like the little pearls in the in the middle of the knits a rib is just like trading off knits and pearls. Um, so you get like, like here you can see, like here you get a big row of V's and then you got this little chunky ladder in the middle. That's those, that's a row, that's like pearls right there. And then you get the pretty V's, which is the knits and the pearls are um, these little lines there again. So, and, the, and combining those two things, like a knit and pearl, the different textures of each in, in different ways, like here's a good example. Here's, here's a knit down the middle, and then along the edge of those Vs, you see a bunch of like little pearly uh, little dots there. Like all, all, of, all of these little sunken ear, in areas, those are pearls, and this is a knit. So just the combination of all those um, gets you like everything. All the different stitches. Sometimes you sometimes you like move a stitch from one needle to the other, or you hold on to stitches for later, and you you, you get back to them later, and you hold them on like a safety pin, all that sort of stuff. So there's there's a lot going on, especially with these cables, like you know moving a stitch over to get like the, them going at angles. Um, so. There's a lot of a uh, lot of maneuvering on on the needles, but ultimately it's just a uh, knits and pearls. Oh, are you left left-handed and you had a right-hand um, teacher uh, show you? So uh, there's something interesting. Like I heard, um, oh Shay Shay Ray, I am a uh, I am adding cuffs. Uh, so I already did one here. So I'm adding cuffs to my to a vintage sweater. Basically, this is my mom's sweater from high school, and uh, it just fit a little bit funny. So I've turned it into a cardigan over the past uh, week or so, and I've also and I'm now I'm just um, adding cuffs to it. So sparrow spite who's a tatter on, on TikTok and everywhere here. She had a video recently, or, or they had a video recently, sorry, that um, they had a video recently of, you know, a left-handed left -handed tatting. Uh, so left-handed tatting, and they recommended that you actually, you can tat left-handed, but... Uh, they recommended that you actually try it the normal way because a lot of the motions, a lot of the um, a lot of the action is actually happening in the left hand. So you might actually pick it up easier by doing it the way that right-handed people do it. 
Uh, and I think, I suspect that might be pretty similar to knitting and, and crochet. So I don't know if there's, I don't know if it's really worth thinking about it as a, a left-handed and right-handed thing to do. Uh, my mom did not make this sweater, actually. Uh, it was in a, an ex-boyfriend's mom <laughs> made it uh, for her, which, I don't know, I think is super funny. And um, she mentioned that she it was great for ice skating. <laughs> and uh, it had, like, it has kind of, like, a, a weird neckline, I think. And she's like, it's, it's, a light, it's like that on purpose, because you'd wear, like, a... A turtleneck under <laughs> so it has it has like a fun fun story oh you tried tatting both ways oh interesting so I'm curious what you like more oh man I wonder if we're gonna run out of our yarn here by the time we're done yeah I don't think so this freaking yarns lasting forever oh interesting Nolene says most patterns are written for English knitting as opposed to European knitting um, so easier in English style. So is European is that European uh, knitting is that um, the same as continental? I suppose that makes sense. Huh. That's curious. Yeah, I need to dig into knitting. So one of my goals with knitting, and and this is just like a random floating around goal that I'm not actually working towards, but like, it's like a someday goal. It hasn't, it hasn't bubbled up to the top yet. Let's just say that. So a lot of times crafts bubble up to the top and I'm like, I need to know how to do that right now. And then I'll learn, but uh, this hasn't bubbled quite up to the top yet, but I want to really dig into like all the mechanics of knitting, like all the different ways to cast on and bind off and increase and decrease and why you would do one over the other. Like I really want to dig into all those because I'd love to just know how to do stuff right away without ha having to look it up each time and I'd love to be able to like construct my own stuff because I get the mechanics of it. I feel like I feel like I generally do but it's still floating out there a little bit like I haven't quite snagged it. Uh, <laughs> so that's one thing I just want to sit down and uh, and my uh, another goal with knitting is to do it without looking at it. I have a friend that can just knit without literally without watching what she's doing so she can read a book and do it at the same time and that'd be real fun i feel like me i'd be productive as hell if i could do that <laughs> just read and be able to like knit hats and stuff at the same time dang that'd be cool so the practice of that i'd like to do at some point i figured that'll come in when um my my timeline for that is when all the washcloths I've knit get so crappy that I have to knit more um, during those sessions of me knitting more washcloths I'll I'll attempt to train myself to do it without looking <laughs> that's that's my theoretical plan but yeah the mechanics of it all I'd like to dig into it more same with other clothing and I don't know. The list is endless, right? You can kind of knit without... JW says, I can kind of knit without looking, but my tension is different. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so the act of looking just changes that up a little bit. That's interesting. So that'd be an interesting experience. Oh, washcloth crochet is so much faster, though. Oh, I bet. Yeah, and then you'd have all those nice little ridges and everything for for a washcloth, too. Yeah, I, I did that once already. I've, I've, I've knit a whole pile of washcloths. I had like a whole cone of that cotton thread. Um, so I knit like 12 of them or something. <laughs> and until they're all ripped apart and dead, I'll, I'm not going to do more. I do actually have another cone that I could, could knit up. But we'll just, we'll let it be. For now. But it's on the back burner. Oh, when you don't when you don't look, it's you have a tighter tension. <laughs> Interesting. Ooh, you've done a fair aisle knitting really quick too. Have you tried mosaic? It's it's interesting. 
I have, um, I've done a little fair isle. I would love to do a, a, like a fancy pattern. I'd love to design a really fun fair isle like design. That would be really, really fun. I haven't done much of any of that. I think I've just done like one project. I usually like get curious about a technique and then I do the one project with it and then I'm like, okay, I've tried that. <laughs> so I've done a lot of things once. I haven't done a lot of things more than once. Oh, what type of yarn? Oh yeah, to knit washcloth. So I, I use 100% cotton yarn for washcloths. And it, Joann's has that in bulk all over. the Like they have a whole aisle, basically, of not a whole aisle, but a whole big section, probably a five foot section of that cotton yarn because specifically people like it for, for washcloths. Um, it's that what is that? That sugar and cream or something. And you can get it in cones and stuff too. And it comes in with a lot of really fun colors. They make it now actually with like scrubbies in too. So you could actually make a, a scrubby, like, you know, like that plastic sort of yarn. So it'll be like yarn plus that plastic stuff. Specifically for washcloths. All right, how are we doing here? Oh gosh, it's already nine thirty. Let's let's see where we're at with um. I, I we're clearly don't have the length yet, so I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna be like this is gonna be like a whole nother hour theoretically to to knit more of this. So I don't know. We'll just we'll just see if I get that far. Just out of curiosity, I'm gonna count the rows just to see. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. So this is where I, I don't know with knitting. Do I count do I count the loops as another row? Let's just call that my cast off row. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I have 10 here. I have 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's about where I am now. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I think this is probably 20 and then a cast off row. Yeah, let's count this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And that join that we're counting is 20. So 20, and, it, and we're just at 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, and the cast off. Yeah, so we're about halfway. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be here the whole time, but I'll, I'll stay a little bit longer and see if we can get this a little farther. I, would, I just want to wear it, so I don't want needling, needing needles on it. No, not loop. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you're talking about, Noeline. Oh, I don't count the loop. The um, the cast. The um, what is it? The join. Or I don't count the. T oh, I don't count the top loop. I I remember what I'm talking about. What you're talking about now. So I don't count the loop. I don't count what's on my needles. Is what you're saying. Interesting. Okay. See, see, like all those little things I feel so not confident about and that, that matters, right? When you're counting rows and stuff. So I always never quite know. Oh, do you have a preferred needle set? I mean, I, I'm liking these interchangeable needles that I'm using right now. Uh, they are the square ones. So that gets a little getting used to. And, uh, you know, I probably haven't tested enough, but what I do like about these, so these are the collage, like with a K, K-O-L-L-A-G-E, um, and they're fancy, like they're, they're not cheap. They're the collage interchangeable um, needle set. Uh, what I love about it, though, is that I have not had to go out and buy any needles for any new projects 
because I know I'm going to have them right here. And I have, it comes with different lengths of the, the cable and different, like this, this, this one's a loose cable and then there's ones that are more stiff. So it comes with a bunch of those. Um, this one's super duper long, so I can use it instead of using double pointed needles. So I can use the magic loop method, which is what I'm doing now. I'm still getting used to the squareness of them, but I like the concept. So the concept of the square is that, like if you're knitting a long time, people have gotten like numbness in their, in their fingers and their thumbs and stuff. And the theory is that it's because on a round needle, there's only one point of contact on your thumb, you know, because it's, it's round. So there's just that one point of contact or on your fingers. Whereas with a square needle, your whole, there's like this whole, a whole flat surface for it to rest on. So um, theoretically, you're not getting that one point of contact that can cause numbness and pain if you're doing a lot. Um, I haven't quite gotten the hang of it yet like just keeping my fingers flat on on these needles but I, I like the concept I just I just need more time with them but I love that I'm not like I, I'm I, I don't have to just like oh crap I need a I need a size 8 that has an 8 inch cable on it and ugh, I just have this one that has a 10 inch cable or whatever and I can't do this hat just right or whatever so I do like and I do like that these just don't look like traditionally girly, like a lot of things in the craft industry. So this is how they come. It's just in this little bitty blue case. Um, here they, the smaller ones are on this side and let's see, the bigger ones are on, where's the zipper? Oh, halfway open here. The bigger ones are on. On this side, I have a little, I have a little um, scissors in here, and there's a little bag that I have some markers and stuff. And I, oh, I, whoo, I gotta remember this. I have crochet hooks in here, and I have a little darning needle. Um, <laughs> if I'm looking for these size crochet hooks, I gotta remember they're here. Oh, I got a little one here too. Oh, dang, I got lots of, got crochet stuff in here too. Anyway, um, I love that it's so compact, and it's not like this giant case that's purple or pink. Um, Oh, that just drives me crazy that everything has to be like this purple or pink. Um, there's a lot of that in, there's a lot of that in every industry, I guess. If a woman's going to use it, it's got to be that purple or pink. So I almost got that on purpose because it was that just nice blue. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway. But yeah, I, I do like these so far, but I'm no pro for sure. And a lot of people might have really great suggestions. Oh, you hate all the brightly colored needles and standard sets too. Yeah, I just like, just, I want it to just be these nice neutral, like cold things. I don't want all, all of that extra stuff just to be for the sake of like, look, I'm pretty. Or look, I'm I'm pink. <sighs> Kills me. And I, I read a little bit about the um, interchangeable needles, and I don't know some there were some bad reviews on some other companies and stuff, and and people seem to still like the collage ones, which are these. So this is like where they connect. Uh, they they rotate there, but you don't want them to come out in the middle of, of knitting. So these have been pretty good with that. It's been a little tricky. Like there's a learning curve for sure. And getting all those, getting the, um, getting the needles to stick in there. Sometimes you have to like widen the little prongs. That's what I found works well. Just if I widen them a little bit, then it holds the needle better. So that's, that's a little bit of a learning curve, but man, I just had to buy needles for every freaking project. Cause every project had something super specific and now I don't have to do that anymore, which I love. So there are those bamboo needles. I, I forget what company, but they, they, um, yeah, every size I think is a different color. So I do, I do think that's clever. Like, oh, here are my size eights because they're green or whatever. So I think that's, that's interesting. 
and those are actually really pretty, but uh, it's just like that cable length, like you have the size eights, but sometimes you need the 40 inch cable or you need the eight inch cable. And just to be able to interchange those without having like a zillion uh, knitting needles everywhere is, is I'm, I do like the interchangeables for that. I'm trying to reduce all that extra stuff too. I haven't gotten rid of all my other ones yet, but this one, I just, I have it all together and I have it in a little bag, my knitting stuff and it's just nice. I like. I like them. Oh, you can't knit on wood needles. Your tension is too tight. Oh, that's interesting. I'd love to do. Like that's one of those experiments that I'd like to just try. Like let's just work on tension. Like I don't know. Let's do something where I have to be really gauge conscious and all that. I've I've never really done anything like that. So I'd love to dig in more. Oh, you get what I'm... Marcia says, I get what you're saying, but I do actually love pink. <laughs> so I love... I like pink, too. I don't just like being told that that's my only choice, I guess. <laughs> is is more is more of what it is to me. I do like pink, and I do like purple, but I don't like being told that that's all you get. And that's how it is a lot, I feel, or was at least. So, I don't know. When anything is not those colors, I, I in an industry and in an area where, you know, like shoes too, like running shoes. It's a little bit different now, but dang, like just, you're going to give me white shoes that have the pink and purple details? Like, come on. So... When, when there's an industry that's been feeding, like force feeding me that I can only have those two choices for a while, I on purpose, um, even if I like the pink or whatever, I on purpose go for the other colors just to tell them that like, yo, you can't like, <laughs> I can like other colors. Anyway, it's just, that just kills me. God, I remember I went to a store, I needed hiking boots, and it was like one of these overstock or discount stores. So they had a whole aisle of hiking boots, like maybe, I don't know, 50 different pairs of hiking boots to try on or whatever. There were two pairs out of the, out of all of that aisle of women's hiking boots, only two pairs that did not have pink and purple in them. You know, whereas, you know, the men's aisle, first of all, had like three times the amount of, of boots, hiking boots. None of them had like a color that was, this is the color that you have to have because you're a boy. Um, you know, so I only chose between those two pairs out of like the 50 that didn't have any pink and purple on and then like one pair of those two fit well so that was my pair but like give me a break all right let's see yeah we definitely have more to go here a lot more to go but eh, i'm feeling good i'll hang out a little bit more oh so colette says the ones on your needle are considered a row Okay, so, like, if I cast off, then this will become, like, another one of the little, like, V's and, and pearls. So I do have to, I do have to count it. Oh, you wear men's boots sometimes. Yeah, that's the thing, like, I don't know. I don't know, and, and I'm sure it's changed a little bit now, but, oh, I just cringe when those are my only choices and everyone knows there's it's a specific color pink and a specific color purple it doesn't veer from from those so whenever whenever i see stuff like that i i always buy a different color um unless that's like yeah i don't know i ugh. they need to know that women <laughs> need more choices than just those two colors companies so I try and steer clear 
oh god the teal jay wiggly says don't forget the teal too there is that horrible teal too isn't it oh god i know yeah i mean like you say that you know exactly what color you're talking about immediately <sighs> kills me <laughs> john my husband probably just you know, if he was here for this conversation, he'd just be rolling his eyes, probably, because I'm this, I like, did I just go off on it every time I hear, hear about that? <laughs> Marsha says, but I do have some pink boots, too. So, there's a difference between buying pink things I mean, I said this already, but buying pink things because you like pink and they're cute and sweet and fun, but which I'm totally down for. I like pink stuff. Um, but there's a difference when that's the only option you have. Whereas like in the, like I said, in the men's aisle, they got options of every color or whatever, you know, <laughs> like I want cute blue shoes. I don't want white shoes with pink and purple teal details all over it and have that be like eight of my choices and I only have one choice of a different thing. <sighs> and I, I, I'm betting now it's quite a bit different. I don't, I just steer clear of everything <laughs> related to that, that I just don't like see it so much anymore. And maybe it is a little bit changed, but I don't know. There's some industries that hang on to that stuff. I haven't bought, um, I haven't bought running shoes in a while, but I on purpose bought like these blue ones, like these, you know, last time. Cause I'm like, I'm not buying any of them that have any pink or purple or like, yeah, there is that teal, any of those details. I am not, I'm letting them know that there's a market for other colors. <laughs> Ugh, not Katie. Ugh, yeah. Alright, I think we're kind of far from my 20 stitches here yet. I, I counted 20, right? I, I said 20. 20 and then like the bind off one. So I'll, um, I don't think I'm quite there yet. I'll count again in a little bit. Maybe we'll get there yet tonight. I'm I'm kind of close enough now that like I I should just power through and finish this thing. Like I said, I want to wear it. I I wore this um, today <laughs> with one perfect cuff and one where my wrist was cold all day. So I'd like to wear it and not have that happen. Oh, Rock and Robin! I'm so sorry to hear that. Oh. That's sad. I am going to count now. One, two, three, four. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And I'm going to count this as like when I cast off. So I'm just going to count these ones. So 14. So I need like six more rows here. And I don't even, I don't know if this is the beginning of the row. I didn't put a marker on this time, but somewhere there's the, oh, right here. So here's that start where, where the seam is. So this is, so I am at the beginning of the row. So uh, just like, what did I say? Six more rows. Eh, we'll just keep going for a little while. I'm sure I'll stop before I reach six. Deborah says, you're so close to being done, you can do it. I, I think I can do it, too. I mean, we will be here for a while yet. I'll be here at least another half hour, for sure, um, to do the six rows plus the, the bind off or cast off. Do you guys say cast off or bind off? When you search for it, it's called both things. Um, I think my natural tendency is to say cast off just because I'm used to saying, like, you cast on. 
like cast on, cast off, but I think, yeah, I think probably bind off is probably the more popular way of saying it, or the more like traditionally right way of saying it, I suppose. Oh, you didn't think the pink tax was that literal to that moment. Oh, God, I know. Cast off. You say cast on. Oh, cast on and cast off. Okay, so I got two votes for cast off. My immediate is just to say cast off, and I'm like, oh, wait. Do people call it that? Because <laughs> it's the bat bind off. Oh, Nolene says cast off. Debbie says cast off. All right, well, good. That makes me feel better. I always thought, ha, huh, that's a... another knitting thing I'm I'm doing wrong is saying cast off instead of bind off. Alright. Yeah, I don't think we'll run out of yarn. We'll be we'll be close. Like, I can make an itty-bitty ball of yarn if I wound it up when we're done, but I don't think we'll be out. Bind off makes you think, oh, of quilt bindings. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Maybe that's why it feels weird for me to say, too. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to continue. That, that does it for me. I'm calling, I'm, I'm keeping that a quilt term, and I'm calling this a cast off officially and deciding that that's the correct way <laughs> but yeah that makes sense I, I think of that like I'm binding binding my quilt yeah that means something something else in my head yeah agreed okay I like that oh, and that's just reminding me that I have like four quilts that I need to quilt that are like prepped to quilt just about more stuff on the list of unfinished things. I think we did like maybe one and a half rows since I counted last. I don't know. Ooh, need more yarn though. Oops, now I'm all tangled. It's so interesting watching other people knit, I think, like, like people better than me. <laughs> it's just, they're so fast and, I don't know, can talk and read and all those things. It's just fascinating. You can just see, like, and just like the, um, what do you call that? Where you don't have a lot of, where you don't do a lot of extra movements. Um. I don't know, where there were just really as little movements as possible to do the job so things go faster and, and easier and concise. That's not the that's not it, but anyway. I like that. That's where I always try and improve. Ooh, I've been twisting, like rotating the sleeve backwards, like in a way that's awkward for knitting, at least for me. So I think I'm twisted around that direction enough that I can just twist the way that's comfortable now. Oh, efficient. Yeah, like there's efficiency of, of movement. I think, yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking of. There's an efficiency of movements. Um that you can see um, when other people do these sort of things and, and that's what I want to improve on. And that's that's one of the reasons why I've, I'm trying to get better at continental knitting too. It's just more efficient in its movements than uh, English or, or uh, throwing throwing method. 
Oh, I didn't look up the flicking thing, though. I have to look that up. This is looking closer to the length it needs to be, but I don't I don't think we're at the six rows though yet. I don't think I'm that fast in either. How long have I been working on this project? So just just a week's wait. Maybe just over a week. No, we've been working on this two weeks. So two weeks. Uh so I, I did not knit the sweater. Um I have I have cut open the sweater though so this was a fully made sweater and i've i've cut it open and uh lined the edge with um grosgrain ribbon here and it's wool so it's all it's kind of holding together pretty well i kept an eye on it today though i think some of the fibers were coming apart i didn't needle felt some more of those fibers together and actually after doing these cuffs i'm tempted to add a band but i think i'm going to leave it um, I might add a little collar to it. So, so we, uh, we cut open the sweater last week and a little bit, we worked on it this week a little bit as well. And then we picked up the cuffs. I, I did the other one. I finished that last night. That took like two nights though. And uh, now I'm trying to do this one in one night, but yeah, so I'm doing this cuff. So basically, I don't know, two-ish weeks, just an hour in the evening here and I'm learning the entire process along the way so <laughs> that's been a challenge I've learned like eight new things <laughs> while doing this so um, you know that slowed things down a bit I'm sure but yeah I did not knit this that would have taken ages for me for sure it would have been fun though i mean like there's so many cables on this so i i thought this was i don't know if i would talk about this yet but i thought it was knit in the round but i was wearing it all day today and uh, thinking about pockets because i was thinking oh it'd be fun to do pockets and i know i was remembering what you said oh like i can just go in the seam and like cut that open and and do pockets there and i'm like well there is no seam because it's knit in the round and I know I was thinking about that today and I noticed, oh, it's not actually knit in the round. It's just um, sewn. The seam is sewn together really well. <laughs> so I, I didn't realize that it wasn't like immediately that it wasn't knit in the round. But after closer inspection, it was um, knit flat. Um, all of the pieces. So the front um, and the back and then the sleeves were also knit flat and then it was all sewn together after and I thought ooh, I am getting kind of twisted here still um, I thought the gosh maybe I'm going faster than I thought I didn't think I'd be that twisted and oh I just lost my loop here oh well um, let's let's count again I'm freaking myself out because it is looking close to the length of the other one so what, 20 is what we we're kind of going for one two which was an accident that it was exactly 20 uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, we're just at 16. God, we only did two rows since we last, wait, no. 16, yeah, we only did like two rows. <laughs> All right, four more, let's just compare. Oh yeah, that looks like four more rows. <laughs> at least two. Um, can I describe how we picked up the stitches? Was it tight? Uh, a little tight, tighter than a, my normal stitch. So I went, so here's the, you, we can see from the inside. So here's, here's the cast off. I went right underneath the cast off, which is just like the edge. Like I went right underneath the edge here. And uh, so like here you can see, see the edge above this little like V, upside down V here. I didn't go in, I didn't pick up right in the edge. I went right in the middle of the V. So you just stick your needle in, make a little loop and bring it forward like you're knitting. And you've therefore like pulled forward a loop. You can kind of see the backs of, of those loops there. So I'm just kind of pulling forward loops and they're all on my needle. So this is a knit one purl one rib. So I'm, I stick my needle in, in a knit and then bring, bring the loop forward. And, you know, a crochet hook would even work better. 
but then you have to do a crochet and then like stick it on your needle whereas here you can just go in and kind of just grab it with your needle uh but yeah so then then by doing that you end up with all your loops on your needle ready to go and then i just started knitting in the round i had to look that up i had to google how to pick up stitches on a cuff um, but it seems to work Oh yeah, so not Katie. That's that was something I learned. So that was like the little aha moment of um, learning how to do cuffs to to not because I was a hundred percent planning on going in the little in in the casta off edge, just like picking up those stitches. So that was a new idea to me to like go just like the next row down basically and go into the actual V of the of the knit stitch and you know the back of the knee. I, v for like the purl stitch but i think what that accomplished by doing that is um my stitches are perfectly in line with the white ones that came below like it's just an extension of of all those v's and i don't think i would have had that so perfect uh if i just would have grabbed like the top the top little row here because like i would i would have been off a little bit right i'd be like in the middle of my stitches instead of right in in the stitch so i think that's um what that accomplished so that that was good i think a nice thing to to have learned before doing it and then it makes sense right like i wouldn't have thought of doing that ever um but when I get like, oh, you're doing that because then it's going to be perfectly in line with those other V's, I would have never even thought to match that up even really until, until I saw that suggestion. So, um, but yeah, now it makes sense to me. Oh, have a great uh, day, Nolene. Nolene's in the future. <laughs> she's, she's in Saturday afternoon already. Have a nice day. Ooh, I feel like I did that wrong. Eh, see, this is where I never know where to put my needle again. Did I lose a stitch here? Oh no, this is a knit. All right. Point knit. Oh, I remember. I know what's going on. I'm like, why am I starting on a pearl? It's because I, I lost the where my loop was on, my magic loop was. So, okay, so I am starting on a pearl here. I'm going to fix that immediately because that's going to confuse me. Yeah, jeez. All right, let's, you can be on that side, pearl. There we go. Now we're starting on a knit again. Yeah, okay, good. I was just looking, did I make that mistake through the whole thing? Like, am I, are my knits and pearls off now? But I think we're fine still. Ooh, that's the one, the one thing about going late here on these, on these lives. That's when I start doing stupid stuff. Stupid stuff. So hopefully I was doing it correctly on the other side. We'll see, I suppose. I'm glad I caught that. I'm like, why is this? This is like, I'm not on the knit. I'm looking at the little V's and I'm, when I see a V, I do a knit. When I see the little, little nubbin for the pearl, I do a pearl. And that was, that was off. Okay, there we go. So this loop I lost before. We're so close. I'm getting tired though. But I want to wear it tomorrow. I got to finish it. Oh no! <laughs> you had a frog four days of your temperature blanket because 
Uh, you're riding around the riding down the wrong temperatures. <laughs> That's a huge bummer. Uh, oh, and you had to, Katie had to do that with her current project too, just because it was too late. To, you were making mistakes because it was late. Yeah. Ugh. Man, honestly, if I if we would have been off on a row here, I am not sure I would have changed it. I might have just have left it. Oh, maybe I would have gone back. I don't know. Maybe I would have quit for the night and gone back and... I probably would have just gone back and switched it. The other thing that happens when it's late is my perfectionist mode goes on. And then I need... Like, I need it all to be right. So I suppose I would have maybe tried to backtrack. Ugh. Even that, that would have been annoying. A lot of times I do like actually leaving those mistakes because I feel like it's it's like a moment of a reminder of like, oh yeah, that's that time that I made those stitches in the wrong order. <laughs> it's like a part of my like history in my brain of the project. Um, but for this particular project, I probably would have backtracked. go a little bit more and then we'll count again I think we had what like four more I'm sure I haven't done four I've done maybe like one and oh god now I need to count again I'm like I'm at the beginning so here's here's my seam again I'm gonna end up counting every row I should just have a a marker on here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Wow, we're close. Let me count that again. <laughs> Getting picky. Uh, one, two, oh gosh, that's hard to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And then I would cast off, which would give me the last one. 18, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna just go two more rows. So. All right, I'm gonna pay attention. <laughs> pay attention to what I'm doing though now. I'm just laying this out again, just to kind of compare. Yeah, that probably has a good two more rows on that. Fine. Two more it is. And then uh, then we'll bind off, or cast off, and we're casting off now. No more bind offs. Binding off is for quilting. All right, I might actually count this though not count like numbers but say in my head that this is row one and we're at the beginning yeah we're at the beginning here too yeah okay getting my bearings oh the, on the bright side uh, for you having to frog your piece the uh colors are better for the temperature quilt that's nice the temperature blanket are you knitting or are you um crocheting I saw someone doing a temperature, like, beaded necklace, and I'm like, oh, that's a cool idea. And all she had to do is, it's like three beads wide, like little seed beads. So she just has to, like, weave together three beads per day, and it's going to be just like a, a long necklace. I'm like, well, that's that's easy peasy, just, just three bla um, beads and you're good to go. Jenna, who works with me, is doing uh, temperature embroidery. No, cross stitch. Cross stitch where it's like a bookshelf with 365 books on it. And uh, um, each book you like fill in the spine like it's sitting on a bookshelf with the color. That's going to look super cute. So I, I'm using this really long cord for my magic loop. I have a shorter one that's like four inches shorter. I should have maybe used this, that one. This one's kind of awkward. Oh wait, I'm not in the middle yet. Okay, so I'm, I've done half, half of the first row. probably not very efficient with this magic loop like I probably could keep I could probably keep the yarn in my hand while I'm doing all the switcheroo and then just start up right away but eh, maybe not oh 
you've seen the temperature bookshelves. Oh yeah. So it was, it was last year's, I think, um, project and she's, she's doing it this year. Cause I think this year was like different mixed drinks, which is kind of fun, but uh, she liked the books bookshelf idea better. So she, she did that one. That's right. So that was like last year's cross stitch with that. Ooh, I should Google that to see what some other people's look like. Okay, I'm hoping, since I didn't, I, I think I'm counting this correctly, um, but I'm hoping, like, let's say I don't count this correctly and I have, like, an extra row on, on this cup, I'm hoping that one extra row isn't going to make them feel different. So I'm going to just hope that I actually counted correctly. All right, so is this the beginning again? Yeah, so, all right, this is going to be the last row, and then we'll bind off. Or cast off. Dang, look, now I'm now I just keep saying bind off. Huh. My mouth is used to bind off, but my brain says it's cast off. That's funny. Oh, you thought about making a temperature blanket, but you work full time and you're a college student. Yeah, that's kinda you know, I, I was thinking about that too. Like, oh it'd be just neat, a neat project and but yeah, I I didn't think I could commit to doing it every day <laughs> even if it was just a row I like I, I just didn't feel like I'd 100% be able to do that and I didn't want it to feel bad like I, I didn't want to feel like oh man I missed three rows again you know um so I'm like you know what maybe I'll just work on finishing these projects that I already have and call it a day even though it would be fun to do a temperature blanket and they're super duper popular right now but, ah, uh, well. Finish up, finishing up unfinished project. That's, that's what I'm doing. And this is feeling great getting that done. All right. Last little bit of knitting right here. We'll count it again for sure. But, um, just to make sure. But, yeah, I'm on the other side. This is it, though. This is the last bit. And then we'll do that bind off. It's that. I'm going to do the same one. So I'm, I did the tubular bind off where it's just the, with the darning needle. And I'm going to have to, I wrote down the instructions for it, but I'm going to have to like say it all out loud again. And oh man, that's a whole thing. I gotta, gotta keep my brain on for that. Oh, you didn't realize Jay Wiggly, Jay, <laughs> Jay Wiggly, JW, uh, says I didn't realize they were going to be such a big thing and and I'd seen one a few years ago. Yeah, they've been like around forever, but now like it's just like blowing up. Oh, you want to be you want to make something to commemorate my marriage. It's been over a week of being a wife. Oh, well, congrats. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, that'd be a that'd be a, a cute reason to do a, a temperature blanket. But yeah, I mean If you got like work full time and and you're a college student, I mean that's pretty intense. So, I, you know, it'd be cute to do a, a blanket, but if it's just gonna just add more stress, then then I don't know. But if it's that thing where like you can just chill for that five minutes to to knit a row or whatever, then then maybe there's something to it. Yet. Yeah after like a super long grueling day for me in my current mindset i would that would um that would put pressure on on me where i, where I didn't want it. i already like having all these projects that are unfinished is is like enough <laughs> pressure on me for right now all right that's it that is our last row here Let's just do a quick count again. It, they, it feels big, but it, it's just maybe not stretched out. Well, I guess it feels the same as this one, so maybe it doesn't feel big. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. All right, let's do it. Okay, I gotta switch my brain now. Let's get um, get the thread to our right here. 
Okay, so I need, here are my, my instructions again for myself. So I'm using the Stitches and Scraps uh, tutorial. So I, uh, this was just the YouTube video I watched. It was from Stitches and Scraps. That's, that's their YouTube handle. And this is the tubular bind off for a one-to-one -one knit pearl ribbing. All right, my first instruction. <laughs> these are my instructions to myself based on the video. Uh, cut the tail. That's four times the circumference of, of our thing here. So again, that's about like so. All right, one, two. Ooh, gosh, I got a little, that little center area that gets weird on yarn. Um, three, four, and I'm going to just get a little extra because I'm paranoid about running out. All right, and here's what's left of our yarn. I will definitely just roll this up into a ball because it gets crazy when it's just this airy. It's a mess. Okay, let's get this on the needle. So th again, this is that weird needle that I got from Joann's just to try out. It has like that latch hook um, opening. Just so I guess it's easier to thread because I don't have to thread it, right? I could just hook it in there. Uh, and then I close it up, but it has like, you know, that exposed little points there. So I'm not convinced this is ideal, but I have it and I wanted to play with it. So we're giving it a try. Okay, I'm, I'm continuing with my little instructions here. Uh, okay, make sure a knit is the first stitch. First of all, we are on the, yeah, right here. Okay, I do believe a knit is our first stitch. Yep, our row of Vs. Okay, so now I have a setup round where I'm gonna put end up putting two on the second needle, and then after that we we pull them all off like a normal like a cast off. So I'm just gonna get this needle kind of scooched up in here to like acquire those stitches. Okay, so now we just did this last night, so let's see if I can pick it up quickly again. I think I got faster at it last night, so we can probably do it pretty fast here. Okay, I'm set up. So, all right. Tapestry needle. Okay, do knitwise. Oh, knitwise and move to the other needle right away. So I'm going knitwise, which is left to right. I'm just going to pull the, the yarn through and we're going to get you on this needle. I think I'm just going to pick you off. Normally you would just pick it off, but in her instructions, she had the extra step of putting on this other needle because it's easier to do the last couple steps of the last stitches when you do that. Got to get that kind of tight. Um, all right. And then we skip the purl. And then we insert purl wise into the knit stitch. Oh, okay, it's coming back for back to me. I gotta like say knit purl purl knit. So knit wise, and now we skip, and then we go purl wise. There we go. And then I think we go purl wise again into now the purl stitch that came before. Go back to the purl, insert purl wise, and move to the other needle. Oh yeah. This, this one, we got to move to the other needle again, just for this, this setup round. Oh, come here, guy. There we go. All right, and now I can get this, this other needle out of the way. It doesn't need to hang out here anymore. Okay, and then the last part is, now I'm s skipping that knit stitch, and I'm going into the, from the, back and then going knit wise into this purl. All right, I got it. I got it now. All right, so that's that's like the four part the four part cast off here and then with this extra little bit of for the first setup by putting those other two stitches. But now we can just take them off. So, let's see. Knit purl purl knit. Okay, so that's like knit wise, purl wise, purl wise, knit wise. So I'm going knit wise into the first one and I'm taking it off the needle. And then actually I'm gonna go purl wise. I'm gonna skip the next one and go purl wise over here. I'm gonna do that, those motions in the same time since physically you can and that'll make it go faster. 
and now go purl wise here and I can take it off right away and then I'm gonna come through the back at the same time right like so oh, I'm glad I did this last night because it's it feels fresh and then knit wise through that second stitch all right and that's our four step deal let's do it again uh, knit wise and off and then purl wise skip one and then purl wise all right and I'm trying to not pull too tightly but I maybe a little bit more than I was doing last night and then purl wise and off but then come from the back here skipping that stitch next to it and then going knit wise who figures this stuff out this is crazy town oh have a great weekend sylvia i know we are way pat like we're we're an hour over um uh, my usual here so th thanks for sticking with me guys i know this is this is a lot knit wise pearl wise i just have to i i wanted to wear this this week and i wore it all day today like i was saying with um I have to say this out loud as I do it, pearl wise, and then come from the back. Um, but I wore it all day today with the, just the one, just the one cuff done. So it was, um, it was annoying because my one wrist was cold. So I want to wear this for the weekend and next week. So next week we're going to be working on, uh, we're going to be doing the embroidery of the month. And uh, so we won't be working on this guy for at least a week, um, pearl wise and to the back. Uh, so I want to, I want to be able to wear it. I don't want to, just sitting with knitting needles. So that's why I decided to stay late tonight and just get it done. Oops, I got, oh, see, like, this is what I'm saying. I'm caught on. I don't know if I'm down for this this needle. Hold on. Like, look at that. <sighs> well, I suppose I can just grab onto it here. So now I'm going to have that little, like, wool bit there. Oh, well. Boo. All right. Knit-wise, I was still on that. OK, we're almost done with this needle. Pearl wise or knit wise and then pearl wise. So with each each round of four where where two two stitches are coming off the needle. And knit knit wise. Okay, um knit wise pearl wise and then pearl wise this one's a little fuzzy too that's oh come on there we go pearl wise and then come from the back wise all right now we gotta scooch these guys over so let's bring oh i suppose we want to go the other way let's pull on this and bring it all back almost done second half of this and that's it all right Knit wise, pearl wise, and then pearl wise into the back. It's adding these little like loops that make it look like an, it's an extension of the pearl. Okay, knit wise, pearl wise. This is a lot like uh, Kitchener's stitch. Pearl wise into the 
back. And it was. It would be a perfect cardigan now. Oh, now I'm going to do what you did. Oh, cool. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, oh, when will you be going live to tat? Oh, I should go. I could do that again. Um, uh, so next week we'll be embroidering every night. Uh, but we could do some tatting after that. I do have that unfinished uh, little snowflake. That would be fun to do some more tatting. Take a little bit of a break from from this guy. I mean, I, I guess technically we could be done with with this, with this um, sweater, but I'd love to add some red to the collar. And I actually, I think that's easier said than done. I think there's a little process I got to do with that. Um, that's a little bit different than these cuffs. And we talked about adding pockets at some point. Um, this, this is goofed up again. I'm kind of declaring that I don't, I don't think I really like this weird needle. They were just interesting. Uh, but yeah, we could do some tatting. Uh, it would be the fourth week of, of January. That'd be fun. Live tatting. We could do live tatting then. Um, knit. Knit pearl. But yeah, I did a little bit the other day. Not live, and it felt good good to do again. I hadn't done it for a little little stint. I did a lot of it on like Christmas vacation or just like that whole kind of winter holiday season and then I got back to work basically and I didn't get a chance to do it after that. So I'm, I'm itching to do do more more tatting for sure. Oh, the blankets all caught back up. That's awesome. <laughs> so you're, you're caught up to today again. That's, that's funny. Dang, our weather, by us, our weather, bl like if I was doing a weather blanket, it'd be all freaking over the place. Like it was negative uh, degrees out and then it was 30 degrees which is like 40 degrees warmer than it was and today it's chilly again but today's snowing I don't know it's it's a whole it's been a whirlwind a little bit here I feel like I'm doing this a bit tighter, everything a little bit tighter than yesterday, but I'm sure it'll stretch out from me wearing wearing it. Oh god, yeah, I do not like this weird darning needle. Oh, we're almost there though. I gotta just stick with this a few more times and then we'll be close to done. All right, I gotta fix my needle again here, though. Stupid, I don't like it. There's gotta be a decent use for this, though. I'm just not, not doing it. Okay, knit pearl. Yep, the chore, Pamela is saying, what about the chore quilt coat? Yep, that is still an unfinished project for sure. That to me is less of a need to get done, although it's it's feeling a lot more like it needs to get done now. But like that one was just like as we work on other projects, that one is sort of getting done. But now that I know what I want to do with all those like leader and enders, I do want to I do want to kind of move forward on that that quilt coat. I, I do really like that idea still. Um, pearl. Someone mentioned on Facebook the other day though and, and then I, I looked right after I'm like oh dang this would be an option. So um, if you go to Facebook Marketplace and type in quilt, 
people are selling like these vintage quilts that you know someone in their family made and took them thousands of hours and are totally intricate and they're like selling them for like twenty dollars because no one knows like the value of of a quilt and it's just flabbergasting if you like you know quilt at all and know how much work and fabric cost and all that goes into one of those um so it really shows the value people put on that which is annoying but anyway um so these are the last two stitches and i can just pull these off right away but anyway so i'm tempted to just get someone else's old quilt that they made and turn that into a chore quilt but it wouldn't it wouldn't be the same as doing it for my own own scraps um but anyway, someone mentioned that, and I had to look right away on the Facebook Marketplace, and sure enough, for 20 bucks, get yourself a perfectly beautiful, like, you know, very intricate, appliqued, hand-stitched quilt, which is crazy. Oops, sorry. All right, so these last two are the ones that we carried over from before, so we can actually just zoop those right off. And we got ourselves a cuff. Oh, I still have to weave in the ends, I suppose, too. Fine, we'll weave in the ends. Oh, and then I'll have something I can wear tonight. Great. So I had to learn how to weave in the ends for a rib, too. So what you do is... Oops, I think I got to go Yeah, this way. You just kind of pick one of these rows of V's and you wrap around one side like five or six stitches or something. We'll go, we'll go this many. Uh, doing weaving in the ends this way for a rib allows it to stretch and move like a normal, like a vertically and horizontally like a rib would. All right, so then I'm going to go under the next V to the other side. And then we're going to kind of go up, back up the same way just kind of looping around and I think we'll go about to there so it's a little tucked on the inside and then we'll do it for that where we started to and then then the cuffs are officially done after that so let's snip that one all right and then let's weave in that other end oh, this is just yeah I'm not down with these latch hook puppies oh well and let's find here we go that yarn from the beginning oh Deborah says I think that needle is for pulling a thread from the front of the garment to the inside oh like a picked or pull thread oh interesting yeah that could be I'm sure I'm not using it the right way Oh, what's the name of the stitch cast off? I it's called uh, uh, the tubular bind off. Um, I I asked people on TikTok the other day like, what bind off do I use or cast off? Because I don't know. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, and they mentioned either this one or the or like Jenny's. What is it called? Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. But that one looked like it had a really kind of um scalloped edge and i didn't want that i wanted it just to like look like like my ribbing ended um so i didn't do that one and this one was meant to just look as if your knitting just stopped your knitting and purling just kind of ended and that's that's the look i wanted for for these cuffs uh, so that was the tubular bind off some people mentioned. And then I, I looked for a tubular bind off for a one-to-one -one knit pearl rib because I'm doing a knit one pearl one rib on here. And I wanted a, a bind off that, um, took that into consideration because I needed to know that because I, I wasn't, I'm not good enough to like just know what to do. So it's a tubular bind off. Uh, one with a one-to-one -one knit pearl ribbing. Um, if you do a Google search for that, but the video that I specifically looked at was by Stitches and Scraps. So I just did a search for tubular bind-off ribbing, I think, or I did one-to-one -one knit pearl ribbing, 
and then the stitches and scraps tutorial came up as a video and, and that's that's what I'm using. All right, and yeah, I went back down. This is it. Snip. Is this cup cuff meant to be folded? It could. I mean, it looks a little stretched out now, but when I have it on, it doesn't look that way. And I think as I wear it, I probably just didn't do my bind off tight enough just because I don't know what I'm doing really. Um, but when it's on, it's it's stretched out like this and it looks it looks like less less blooped out like this. And if I if I um locked it, I'm sure that would kind of go away too. But there we go. We got two cuffs uh, knit on here and they're looking so cute and it's done and I can actually wear <laughs> wear the wear the final piece here. So awesome, you guys. So thanks so much again for bearing with me this whole time. Uh, we got two cuffs. So the le one last thing I might want to do is the collar. So here's, here's the collar right here. I might want to add just a tiny little bit of red. But I think that's going to have different uh, tricks that are involved um, than the cuff. Because I think I need to actually go around that edge. Because it's going to be more exposed than, than the interior edge. Uh, that I picked up the stitches on on the cuffs. So I don't know. We'll see. But right now I'm calling it a done project unless I get uh, some energy behind me to do to do the collar and and perhaps uh, sticking in some pockets would be kind of fun too. So I don't know. Those two are hanging out there as projects, but we'll see see how it goes. So thanks again. Thanks for bearing with me, staying with me. Gosh, over an hour longer. So we went like almost um, an hour and 10 minutes longer here than usual, but I'm really happy that, that this guy's cuffs are done. So thanks again, and I will see you Monday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Have a fabulous weekend, everyone. Good night.